Uh, this guitar, which Tom used on the cover for Damn the Torpedoes, actually belongs to me, but I was lucky enough to have him borrow it for the afternoon. And um, this is one of my favorite guitars. And I bought this around the second album. We didn't have a 12 string. This is a Rickenbacker 12 string. We didn't have a 12 string, but we, we really wanted one because we wanted to get a sound similar to the birds on a couple of songs. This is before eBay. There was a thing called Recycler, which was a newspaper, and people would sell instruments in your area. So I called up one day. A guy said, had, had Rickenbacker 12 string, $200. And he was in Anaheim, which is about an hour and a half from here. And I called him up and he said, yeah, it's a Rickenbacker 12 string. And I said, okay, I'll be out there. I drove out there and he brought this guitar out and my heart sank because I wanted the big one, like George Harrison or Roger McGuinn with his bigger body. And I thought, oh, this is not what I wanted, you know. And, I, and he goes, well, it sounds good. So I plugged it in, it sounded pretty good. So I said, oh, I really wanted the other ones. I'll give you 150 bucks for it. He said, okay, because I'd driven all the way out. So I took it back. And of course, it turns out to be an amazing sounding guitar. But what's curious about it is years later, we went to the Rickenbacker factory and they looked at the serial number on this guitar and they said, you know, do you realize what you have? And I said, no. And they said, this was the next guitar off the assembly line after George Harrison's Rickenbacker 12 string. They had made a solid body, a smaller body, right after his. So it's from the same era, same year, same ilk. And um, it's probably the best 150 bucks I ever spent, you know. And then, like I said, you know, Tom used it for the cover, and now it's, it's you know, irreplaceable. And uh, it has a 12-string is completely different technique than a uh, six-string because you've got a double two strings on each one. And it requires a whole different approach because it's, it's more delicate, and you can't really bend strings, so you have to really work on on your technique to keep to keep it from sounding kind of messy it takes a little more concentration than a six string but it makes that beautiful sound <laughs> chorus part that was like uh basically how it went. As you can see, this guitar has beautiful high harmonic overtones. Well, there's some stuff at the end of Here Comes My Girl where Ben and I play out over this kind of open string drone. It sort of went like this. Ben played along with it and we had kind of a little uh, arpeggio to go out on. Yeah, we use guitars, Tom and I both, I mean we have a love affair with guitars, especially vintage guitars. And we have a lot of them, and we've, we've bought more over the years, but we use them, it's a, a good analogy, is we use the guitars like different colors of paint. Like if you were a painter and you needed more red, you know, we might go, well, 
we need a Telecaster to, to make that color. Or you need green, so we'll use a Gretsch for that color. Or purple, Les Paul for that color. And so each guitar has its own color, you know. And when you're making a record, if you can hear the, all the colors to make the picture come alive, like in a painting, if you get all those colors vibrant and balanced, then you've got a nice painting. And that, that's kind of why we have so many. And that's kind of how we approach it. Back then we only had two guitars when we started out. So we'd do the best with the two colors. And as we got, you know, now we have, you know, hundreds of them. But we use them all. Each guitar, cheaper or expensive, has one sweet spot in it that it's unique to that one guitar that makes a really, you know, a, a nice color. And so when we're, when we, we're always, you know, we'll have a discussion about if there's a guitar overdub, well, what, what kind of sound does it need? Is it a Gretsch or a Rickenbacker? And what would make the sound that would really help this song? You know, you might have to try a couple to find the right one. But we enjoy doing that. And when you get it right, it makes a big difference. I mean, you could make a record all on one guitar and find a few variations in the tone, but it wouldn't be the same thing.